Happy Monday, Del Marva. We're so happy you chose to spend your Monday with us here on Coast Life. We are your hosts. I'm Paige Marley. I'm Leah Rizzo, and happy 100th episode. We made it to 100. 100 episodes of Coast Life. Mm -hmm. Thank you to everybody who's been here since day one. Yes. I mean, we, we, we're we not sure if we get to 100 episodes of Coast Life. There were but, some days. Uh, there, were, there were some days that have been a struggle, but we really appreciate, you know, all, all the feedback, all the love that you guys have sent us, mm -hmm. all the participation we've gotten on social yeah. media. It's It's been really, really fun to see, and we're excited about 100 more episodes. That's right. And then 200 more, and then 300 more. So we'll be with you every Monday through Friday at 4 o'clock. We're not going anywhere. We're nope. stuck to this couch. That's right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, over the weekend, maybe you enjoyed the beautiful weather that we had. I mean, it yeah. was just a gorgeous day to get out and take mm -hmm. a walk. I know yesterday I hit the sidewalk sale. Yeah. I got myself a, an orchard martini at the mm -hmm. bar. I was I was loving life yesterday. I love. <laughs> Wait, guess who I saw this weekend? Who? Jill Biden. What? Yeah. I was at the White House and she was hanging out in the Rose Garden. There you go. So, Did you say hi? Did no. you invite her to Coast Life? Secret <laughs> Service promptly removed me from the Rose Garden. This is not even a joke. I was out there and getting a tour and they said, ma'am, pull this in. <laughs> and uh, as they closed the door, we said Jill hanging out. So, uh, you know. <laughs> That's fine. I wanted to say hi. They were just doing their job. It was her house. I have to respect it. <laughs> it is enough. where she, I was in her home. So <laughs> That's true. Yeah, yeah, it is true. Yeah. Uh, but also over the weekend, Powerball, nobody won. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> that means that baby is climbing to one and a half billion dollars. I don't. I can't even wrap my head around that. I know. Kind of money. And I guess technically, if you win, you won't be a billionaire because taxes and I don't know how it works. And then you get taxed again. You're a close enough billionaire. But yeah. Yeah. Like I'll take it. I'm not complaining. You know. Yeah. People all the time are like, oh, but then they take this much money away, and you're only getting seven hundred million. I get excited for like a five dollar win on yeah. the Powerball ticket. I'm like, if yeah. you win any money, I'm like, yeah. yay! If I find five dollars on the ground, I'll, it'll make my day, <laughs> right? So we'll take it. Maybe you caught some football over the weekend mm -hmm. too. Uh, Eagles, another undefeated win. That's right against the Rams. We're so excited. <laughs> I'm so excited. <laughs> I know you are. Yes, to only two undefeated teams right now: the 49ers and the Eagles. That's right. So it's getting it's getting real. I feel like it's been a minute since we heard from the 49ers. Like I guess mm -hmm. last year, but I don't know. Then. I don't know. I, I keep up with my teams and then whoever makes it to the Super Bowl. I keep up with my teams and then honestly, a really good way if you are interested in learning more about football, mm -hmm. especially if you're a Swifty and now all of a sudden you're, you're into oh, football, yeah. <laughs> fantasy football. I swear you start caring about more players oh, than are on your team because you're very invested mm -hmm. in who your quarterback is, even if it's not for the team you yeah. cheer for, or you know, like you really watch your players. I remember one time I was babysitting and I told the kids that I was like, Yeah, I'm in I'm in this fantasy football mm -hmm. league. And the little boy I was watching, he knew that uh, Russell Wilson was on my team. Mm -hmm. And I'm like in the kitchen making dinner and all of a sudden I hear him go, Oh no, and I come running in there and I was like, What happened? And he was like, Russell Wilson got so oh. hurt. And I was like, No. Oh, he was just messing sweet. with me. Oh. He was just messing with me. That'll Not do so it. Sweet. How's your league going this year? Pretty well so far. I've okay. only lost one game. Nice. The first game was not looking good, but okay. uh, Lamar Jackson decided to get his act together a little bit. Okay, that's good. Yeah. So I don't have a league, good. so I'm just going to root for your league. Yeah, uh, Saquon is, uh, I think he'll be back next week. I hope he'll be back next week because my team name is Saquon's Your Blessings, by the way. Uh, so I went to school in Pennsylvania, and all the girls thought they knew Saquon Barkley, right? <laughs> like, they all were like, that's my boyfriend. And um, I'll never forget the girls were like, Oh, you know, Say Say? And they all call them Say Say. So now whenever I hear someone say Saquon Barkley, I'm like, who? And then I'm like, oh, Say Say. Oh, Say Say, yes. Because everyone thought that was, they were his girl. <laughs> That's amazing. Sorry, Saquon. <laughs> but you know what else is amazing and apparently a good sign that uh, the economy is doing all right mm -hmm. is people are still ordering French fries when they go out to eat. That, that's how we decide how bad inflation is? How bad the economy is? Well, I, yeah, because in the face of inflation, mm -hmm. if people still opt in for the French fries, mm. they're still on the shell over a little bit of extra money. It okay. seems like people are spending more for like fast food fries as opposed to uh, like a sit down restaurant fry. That makes sense. But it got me thinking, I mean, people are pretty passionate about their French fries. Yeah. So what's your favorite French fry? Favorite French fry. Apparently it's controversial. Arby's curly fries. Those are my favorite kinds of controversies. Mm. I like the curly fries, though. You I'm, do? Thank I, yeah, you. I'm with you on that yeah. one. We might not agree about the Eagles, but I can That's agree fine. with you about curly fries. <laughs> we can't. <laughs> right, what about you? What's your favorite fry? Ooh, I like a really like crispy fry, mm -hmm. which I feel like, uh, as far as like fast food fries go, I mean, like McDonald's is on its own planet. Yeah. 
Uh, but I think, like, I like Bethany Blues' fries. They've got Ooh, good fries. Ooh, yeah, they do. Locally, yeah. Do you remember, did your mom ever get, I don't even know what store, but they're from the grocery store, and they were the fries, and they were, like, a circle, but they had a smiley face? Yes. <laughs> so good. Our school cafeteria used to serve yes. those. Oh, so, you know, I would kill to get those. Now the air fryers are a thing, because they weren't back in the day. I would kill to have those and air fry them. The smiley fries. Mm -hmm. If anyone knows where we can get those. Let us know. Because, yeah, and let us know what your favorite fry is, of too. Of course. You can always chime in on our socials. You can follow us and join the conversation there. Always love to hear from you. We do love to hear from you. Another thing, <laughs> and maybe you're interested in this, if you got a ring camera, definitely um, get recording because it looks like, um, I think it's ring, and maybe Amazon okay. together, because I think Ring is Amazon's doorbell anyway. Um, but they are looking for people who have proof of aliens caught on their Ring doorbell to submit that footage, mm -hmm. and the winner could win a million dollars. Here's why this is such a good marketing idea. Because no one's going to catch an alien on their <laughs> Ring doorbell. Sorry. But there are a lot of people who want a million dollars, who think they're smart. Well, they are smart, but they think they're smart and can, and can beat Ring. And they're going to go buy a Ring doorbell and make fake alien videos. Here's the thing. The best fake alien video gets $500 to Amazon. How much is a ring camera? I don't know. Is it $500? Someone let us know, because if it's <laughs> cheaper than that, then yeah, buy a ring camera, and then boom, you make a small profit maybe. Yeah, I think you could have a lot of fun with that, honestly. Yeah. Like either an alien delivering your pizza, or like that's your DoorDash driver. Mm -hmm. Like I think, I don't know, I think we could get re this could be really fun. This could be so much fun. And I'm, I am, I'm almost positive the winner of the real alien isn't really going to be real. And I bet they just like are really good at special effects. And I'm wondering if someone tricks them, do they get to keep their million? Because you didn't realize it was fake. I don't know. I don't know. I mean, I guess if they deem you the winner and they didn't yeah. realize it was fake, then right. yeah, you get to keep the million as long as you never Ooh. confess. I don't have, I have a camera. It's not a ring camera. See, but now I'm like, should I get ring so I can participate? No. I don't know. I don't know if it has to be ring specifically or not, but I think it does. Okay. We'll look into the details yeah. for you. Yeah, <laughs> this is interesting. I love this. And this makes sense for the times. I think so too. Yeah. Like it's about time we got excited about aliens being confirmed in existence. Like yeah. I feel like the first wave of that news, we were like, eh. mm -hmm. We already knew. But like now, it's it's time to get excited about them. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> Send us your your alien videos. Send them to us first. Yeah. We want to break the news of aliens in Damarva. That's right. That's right. <laughs> well, we're also excited about our 100th yes. episode on Coast Life, and to tell us more about what's coming up on the show is Coast Life's Maya Henry. Coming up next, mark your calendar for Bark on the Board's Black Party in Rehoboth. Plus, learn the legends and untold tales of Lewis. All that and more when Coast Life gets back. Coast Life is brought to you by BB Healthcare, Coastal Comfort Heating and Air Conditioning, Preston Automotive Group, Shell Brothers, and the Parker. Well, it's always a great day when we can do anything to honor and remember those who fought for our country. That's why today I'm so excited to introduce you to, ready? Get ready for this, Marianne, Wendy, and Margaret. Thank you guys all for being here. Thank Hello. you. Thank Good. you for Appreciate having us. It. Of course. So this is a very important group of ladies with the town of Millville, also with Gardeners by the Sea. Could you just let us know real quick what you're doing for our servicemen and women? I heard there's some, some stuff in the works. The Garden Gardeners by the Sea Garden Club is honored to work with the town of Millville and our other partners, um, the VFW, Post 7234, uh, Coastal Communities, Pickleball League, and res local residents to honor and dedicate um, the Blue and Gold Star Memorial on Saturday, October 14th in the town of Millville at Evans Park. Mm -hmm. So looking forward to this, and hopefully we have some good weather for it. <laughs> oh, please. <laughs> but, yeah, we'll see. <laughs> but you mentioned the, the, the Blue Star and the Gold Star Memorials. For someone who doesn't know, what are those? The Blue Star is a living memorial to uh, honor the veterans, both both deceased and living, and also our active service members who are in the armed forces. The Gold Star is a tribute to the Gold Star families who lost their loved ones mm -hmm. at the time of war. And that's incredible that you're doing your part to, to remember them and honor them. I think a lot of people, it's going to speak to them, you know. That's great. So what does it mean to the town of, of Millville to have this in the town? Well, we were very honored also. Um, we were talking about the Blue Star, and I came up with the idea, and I said, why don't we do both? Mm -hmm. And we presented it to council, and of course they approved, and then the rest is history, and we just moved ahead with it. <laughs> and these ladies are key mm -hmm. to doing that. Definitely. And what's so interesting, and um, 
about this memorial. It's the first side-by-side -side display of both mm -hmm. the Gold Star and Blue Star Memorial sponsored by the National Garden Club in the state of Delaware. Wow. And you guys brought this over. If you don't mind, I'm going to try to show you this. It's a list, right, of a bunch of different names. We have active duty veterans, Gold Star. What is this list? It also has, you know, the, um, the seals of all the, the different service, um, different military groups. Who, explain to us who's on this. All right, what we have is a military honor roll mm -hmm. that we've created by inviting anyone in the community to uh, participate by donating $10 to help fund the garden, yeah. which is housing both these memorials. Uh, and for each uh, donation, they can name someone who is a military veteran, uh, active duty service member, mm -hmm. or Gold Star family. And we have over 150 people who have signed up for this. and. It, Information is going to be displayed on a uh, on a sign that is three feet by five feet. Mm -hmm. It's going to be distributed with the program, and uh, we just hope to spread the word that there's a lot of local veterans that we yeah. need to be remembering. That's and that's why I love this list so much. When you guys show me this, mm -hmm. uh, I know it's small print, but that's because, like you said, there are so many names, which is so exciting. And on here, I mean, you can see the different groups they're a part of. You have the Air Force, you have the Marine Corps. I think this really represents our community. Mm -hmm. if, you know, there's a lot of people maybe from different right. backgrounds, but they're coming together. Um, what does it mean to you to see this full list of people who want to remember their loved ones? I just think it's amazing. Yeah. It really is because they also go back to World War II and World War I and um, it's it's remembering mm -hmm. them. Definitely. That, um, this is going to be really cool to see. So tell us yeah. about this event that's coming up that people can be a part of. How can they get involved? And just a little reminder of when and where it is. The event is okay. going to be on uh, Saturday, October 14th at Evans Park mm -hmm. in the town of Melville. Right, and we are starting the public event at, at 10, 11, 11 o'clock, okay. 11 o'clock. And we encourage um, the general public to come out and uh, see the dedication mm -hmm. and the unveiling of, the, of uh, the monuments. Perfect, well thank you ladies so much for letting us know about this really important thing that you're doing. We're really looking forward to this event and being able to see the monument you know, once it's all up and ready to go. Mm -hmm. yeah. Thank you very much. All right, hey guys, we have a lot more Coast Life coming your way, so just stay right where you are, and we'll be right back. If we have a lot of guests come in who are our locals in the community and, and who know the community and grew up here, and a lot yes. of times when they come in here, they say to us before we start recording, they say, oh, did you guys know Tom Draper? And I mean, it, it breaks my heart mm -hmm. to know that we didn't really get a chance to. So Tom Draper was the longtime owner of Draper Media, mm -hmm. who of course has, you know, WBOC, yes. Coast TV News, radio stations. Yes. He left a really big legacy on Delmarva. So someone who is helping keep that legacy alive and celebrate Tom Draper is Madeline Overter. Hi. 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 Thank you for being here, Maddie. It's nice to see you here and not downstairs That's right. by our desk. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. So Maddie looks familiar, of course. If you watch Coast TV News, you've seen Madeline before on the desk. She's also a fearless leader here mm -hmm. with Coast TV. But Maddie, you are helping just keep Tom Draper's memory alive. Just first, you knew him. Could you just tell us about what kind of man he was? Yeah, so I'm very grateful that I knew him. I worked here starting in 2016, and he passed in 2017. So it was a brief period of time. But at that time, this building we're in right now had like five employees total, wow. which is hard to believe. And Mr. Draper would come in here quite frequently, and I was the only reporter here, so he would come in often and speak with myself and James Weaver, our photographer, mm -hmm. and we would just, he was always um, the type of person who you know, always knew who was coming, because he always made a, a presence known. <laughs> he was never shy to share his opinion, but he was a leader of someone with empathy and respect. Like, mm -hmm. he never got involved in news coverage in a way that was like, you shouldn't do that story, or you have to do this story. He was like, what are you working on? Why does it matter? Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. and, and really, cared about that and cared about us as individuals as well. So he was a really, his motto that we always share is we have a moral obligation to serve the people of Delmarva mm -hmm. through our lifestyle programming, news, radio, all the above. And he really, really, you could see, believed that and fully expressed that in everything that he did. It was deep in his soul. Yeah. He was a wonderful man. Truthfully, I've never heard a bad word about this man. No. <laughs> you know, and it's, it's always it's always sad when people say, did you know him? And we have to say, no, we didn't get the chance to because right. it seems like someone that you want to know. Yeah. Oh, definitely. And so it's it's been a big honor to see him receive this huge Lifetime Achievement Award yeah. that we're all here talking about. So he was yeah. just...
just this weekend inducted into the Gold Circle, which is for our Emmys chapter, which includes D.C., Maryland, and Virginia. Mm -hmm. And of course, our station is based out of Salisbury, Maryland, so yeah. we're in that chapter. It's the Hall of Fame of people who have done at least 50 years of broadcasting achievement. And he passed away days after his 50th anniversary in broadcasting. So I nominated him for this award. I'm on the Emmys board. He really changed the media landscape on Delmarva. Mm -hmm. He made WBOC specifically, that was the first TV station, the most dominant small market station in the country, wow. the smallest market to fly a news gathering helicopter wow. to this day, and just kept expanding, like investing in multi-million dollar technology, like the Newsplex, mm -hmm. uh, things like we're sitting in right now. Mm -hmm. While he was not alive to see Coast Life, I know this was on his heart. He always wanted to see Milton become the hub that it is. Mm -hmm. and. Right before he died, they were about to announce Telemundo Del Marva, mm -hmm. and then of course Coast TV was in the works. So this is, he always really committed to expanding and serving Del Marva with mm -hmm. news and programming. And it was really, really wonderful to see him recognized by people from Washington, D.C., yeah. from Virginia Beach, from Baltimore, these huge markets. But he had just as important of a role as everybody there. Mm. Yeah. And that's a prestigious award. I mean, yes. I, I saw yeah. something like, not, not too many people get this award. No, out of the uh, gold circle, which is the 50 yes. years, only 26 people have ever gotten this honor, and now he's one of those 26 people. Oh, that's fantastic. That's incredible. Yeah. What was the response like when you told people who knew Tom that he was going to get this award? Oh, everyone was just so happy. And mm -hmm. I honestly think people didn't realize how big of a deal it was at mm -hmm. first, because let's be honest, we're a little bit removed here on the peninsula from mm -hmm. everything in DC, Baltimore, more, we're kind of like in a good way some ways like yeah, we're, sure. we're doing our beach <laughs> life but to see that stage of these people who like are basically famous mm -hmm. in our industry and Tom is just up there with them and yeah. everybody in those markets too I used to work in DC they knew Mr. Draper if not personally mm -hmm. but the work he did and what our company has done on the Delmarva Peninsula mm -hmm. so it was it was really great to see the reaction of like wow this legacy that he's built that has transferred over the Chesapeake Bay yeah. and just to see that now you know encapsulated in this in this lifetime mm -hmm. achievement award and Hank his son accepted the award mm -hmm. on his behalf mm -hmm. gave a wonderful speech touching on that moral obligation to serve Delmarva his motto and we have the nice award nice and heavy big gold <laughs> yes. plaque that hopefully we'll be hanging up here soon <laughs> we can't wait to see it yes yeah. what do you think just before I let you go that it would mean to Tom to get this award do you think he would oh be like gosh. showing it off or would it be something that he would want to keep to oh. himself well you definitely should ask the people who knew him the best mm -hmm. like Molly and Johnny Hopkins and the people with right. our company um, but but the little that I did know him, the privilege I did have knowing him, he's a very humble person. Mm -hmm. And for him, he would view that award as a touchstone of the work that we're doing is worth it, mm -hmm. but we have a lot more to do. Yes. So, you know, achievement, celebration, he loved a good party. Mm -hmm. You know, so like, <laughs> let's celebrate, let's own it, but let's keep moving forward. Always yeah. progress. Love yeah. that. Love it too. That's a great way to describe the kind of man he was. Well, yeah. thank you for nominating him. Oh, well, thank you, and thanks for having me. Anytime. Course, anytime. anytime. <laughs> Come back upstairs anytime. I yeah. love it. <laughs> awesome. All right, hey, we have a lot more Close Life to get to you guys. Stay right where you are. We'll be right back. All right, Close Life. Well, this time of year is usually known as local summer, where we kind of get our hometown back and we get yeah. to enjoy all the things that Coastal Del Marva has to offer, especially around the Delaware beaches. And if you're familiar with the Forgotten Mile, maybe you're looking to get a little uh, local getaway yourself. Yeah. So we're here to tell you about something going on there. Stephanie Steed is joining us with Hi. Pinnacle Hospitality Group. Hi. Welcome to the Coast Life Couch. Thank you so much for having me. <laughs> so excited to be here today. Yes. So tell us a little bit about Country Inn and Suites. You guys have just done a really big yeah. renovation. Yes, yes, we have. Um, over the last couple of years, um, we have been known as the Quality Inn and Suites in Rehoboth Beach, and we're really, really excited to tell everybody today that we are now officially a Country Inn and Suites mm -hmm. in Rehoboth Beach. Um, and what the really great part about it is, we are Delaware's only, and I want to stress only, 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 only Country Inn and Suites uh, mm -hmm. here. So we are really, really excited. After a $1.5 million renovation, mm -hmm. um, 
the owners have invested so much. We have redone the bathrooms, the bedrooms. We've redone our fitness center, our pool. So uh, when guests do book a room, they book a stay, what can they sort of expect at their stay? I know you guys have a, a slogan that sort of helps make people yeah. feel very comfortable, right? Yes, I can. <laughs> <Go>. <laughs> yes, so Country Inn and Suites slogan is yes, I can. So and while I can't help you get ready for vacation, we can help you when you get there. So if you need an early check-in or you need a late check-out, if you need games to keep the kids entertained, we can provide those services for you. It's really awesome because our sister property, the Country Inn and Suites in North Ocean City, mm -hmm. has actually won the Service uh, Hospitality Award for two years in a row. Wow, congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> so we're really excited to bring that energy here to the Forgotten Mile because there's so many things to offer, whether you're within whether you're staying with us here at the Country Inn and Suites, we are within two blocks um, of within walking distance to the beach. Mm -hmm. You have wonderful eateries right mm -hmm. next yeah. door, um, and there's so much to offer there. So uh, we're really, really excited to bring bring something brand new mm -hmm. to the area. Um, and speaking of brand new, I also want to make mention that we are bringing a new brand, another new brand, to Sussex County um, in Rehoboth Beach. So in the spring of 2024, we will be bringing the new Cambria Hotel, um, which is going to be a full service hotel. It'll have over 100 rooms, over um, 8,000 square feet of meeting and banquet space. We'll have two pools, one indoor, one outdoor, all kinds of fun stuff. So I I'm hoping that we'll see you guys there yes. for that one. And we'll be back um, again to, to showcase that as well. Well, Stephanie, all of these uh, $1.5 million yeah. of renovations are worth celebrating. You guys have a grand opening coming up, right? We do next Friday, October 13th, Friday mm -hmm. the 13th, so you cannot forget it. Exactly. Uh, from three <laughs> to five, we will be having our rebranding celebration and our ribbon cut in, cutting with um, the Rehoboth Beach, Dewey Beach Chamber of Commerce. So we invite everybody to come out. If you're available, please come. Mm -hmm. um, there'll be some light fair, uh, grand tours, and, and uh, so much more to celebrate. So we hope to see a lot of people there. Great. Awesome. Good to know. Fantastic. People are going to be really looking forward to this. Yes. Yeah. Well, Stephanie Sneed with Country Inn and Suites, thank you so much for coming in and telling us about all the renovations yeah. and, and what's new on the Forgotten Mile. But uh, Thank you so much. Thank you. It was wonderful. Yeah. Well, don't go anywhere because we do have some more Coast Life headed your way. You're not going to want to miss it. So I know you guys have noticed our new fall decor. We've been so excited about it uh, because we're celebrating all things fall right now. But also, who does a better job at celebrating all the seasons, all the holidays, than Shell Brothers? Mm, can't think of anybody. Nobody. <laughs> Not even your mom or your grandma celebrates better. I'm sorry. So today with us, we have Elisa <laughs> Titus with Shell Brothers. Thanks for being here, Elisa. Thanks for having me, ladies. Always love coming on the show. Of course. We always love having yes. you. <laughs> so you think Shell Brothers, you might think Shellville. Christmas, but there's a lot going on before we even get to Christmas, mm -hmm. Elisa. Yes. What's going on? We have so many fun things happening in the village. Um, we do have two events that third parties are running prior to us doing our Halloween and Fall Fest in the village. So um, Beach and Bash is doing an event on Saturday, October 14th in mm -hmm. the village. Mm -hmm. And then we have a fashion show benefiting Harry Kay. October 17th in the village. So we're not running those events. Those are ticketed events, but you can go online and find them. They are on our Facebook page mm -hmm. and on Harry Kay's page and Beach and Bash's page. Perfect. And then I'll be at the fashion show. Oh, nice. Yes. Oh, yeah. I'll you be at it. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> yeah. That's so cool. Um, yeah, my daughter has a little shop at Shellville, and she's actually going to be in the fashion show, too. Perfect. So, yeah. Ooh, I love that. It's going to be a fun night in the village. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then we have our events, which we're always really mm -hmm. excited about. The 1021st is our Fall Harvest Fest. Mm -hmm. So tickets are on sale for $10. You get the whole day in the village. We have pumpkin painting. We have balloon making, um, face painting. We are going to have a little corn maze thing. Um, we have a little spooky hallway to go through Ooh. with really fun stuff. <laughs> yeah, and then our food trucks are there. Our food is there. All of our amenities are open mm -hmm. that day. So it should be tons of fun. Oh, yeah, it sounds like so it. Fun. Yeah. I remember going last fall and the way you guys decorated with, there were like gourds and squash yeah. and pumpkins everywhere. And oh my gosh, it was like you walked into a fall wonderland. Yeah, you, it, it looks amazing in the village. We've been working on it. We have some cool new features this mm -hmm. fall. So there's tons of photo ops in the village and thousands so of pumpkins. Ugh. 
And then the following Friday, we have our Trick or Treat Spooktacular, mm -hmm. Fun. which is actually sold out. Okay. Um, okay. But it's, it's a great event for kids and it's free. So we'd love to, to support our community mm -hmm. and do a free yeah. Trick or Treat night for kids. So we have mm -hmm. a lot of fun that night. And then our Brew Bash is a grown up fun night. Mm -hmm. It's $40. We have tons of breweries there. It's going to be a great, last year was so much fun. So we'll have a great time that night in the village mm -hmm. also. Yeah. That's the one like I was it. at last yeah. year. Yeah. yeah. That, that was, was fun. fun. It's really fun. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So for anybody interested in getting tickets to some of these yeah. incredible events coming up, what should they do? Where so they do? Facebook page, our Facebook page, Shellville, um, Instagram, and then of course we have Shellville.com where you can get all things Shellville um, up to date on there. Yes. Perfect. And so you know, today is our 100th episode, so we're celebrating yeah. that, but we're also celebrating something else today, Lisa. Yes. Tell us, what can people do starting okay. today? Exciting news. I know everybody's been asking and waiting and waiting and waiting. Our Shellville reservations go live tonight at 6 p.m. Yay. Okay. So <laughs> it'll be on our Facebook page. It'll be on Shellville.com. It'll be on Eventbrite. Um, as always, our holiday tickets are free mm -hmm. to the public. We ask that you only reserve nights that you know you're going to come. So yes. there's room for everybody. <laughs> we do accept walk-ins as well. So mm -hmm. if you don't for some reason get a ticket, don't worry. Mm -hmm. We were able to accommodate almost all of our guests last year with minimum mm -hmm. wait times. Mm -hmm. So um, it's true, yeah. You really do move through the line. I went yes. last year for the first time. We brought uh, our, our Brazilian niece for like an American Christmas spectacular. She loved I, it. I kind of remember so that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh my god. And uh, yeah, our wait time really wasn't that long. We got through the line just fine. And yeah, I think, I think we were walk-ins too. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah, and we have some really fun new features in the village this Yay. year. We uh, we bought. Um, they're called Alpen Globes. Ooh. So there's six of them, and they're little pods that are beautiful and magical and you can rent them for kids parties oh. or a night a dead adult night and Fun. they're going to be very magical yeah. and they're lit they have their own music oh. system they're heated so Ooh. it's that's really going to be cool yeah. yeah i can't believe you guys still think of things to make it bigger and better i know like, right <laughs> you'd think at some point the creativity would have to run yeah, dry but it never does it never <laughs> does oh we have two new little houses in the village this Cute. year we're doing um our company does summer camp for our employees kids so mm -hmm. we did we created a little camp kudos for the village Aww. and it had the kudos bus the mini kudos bus will be there oh it's so gosh. cute and then of course we had to give uh, love to the coffee house so we're gonna yes. have a little coffee house in there replica and it's gonna be so cute Perfect. so good yeah. love this so the holiday season has started then folks I mean yep. if Shell Brothers says it started <laughs> it's it has started. started that's true <laughs> yes that's true exactly yes. all right Elisa just one more time remind us where we can learn more about the fall festivities and the Christmas yeah festivities. so our Facebook page is mm -hmm. a great place great source of information um, or shellville.com mm -hmm. is always has it there all the tickets are on Eventbrite as well so you can just search it Shellville and Eventbrite and mm -hmm. it'll pop up um, and don't forget tickets go live tonight at 6 p.m. for our holiday stuff so Yay. that's really exciting just a little over an hour yeah we're looking forward right. to it amazing <laughs> all right Lisa thanks for always coming here and always just doing so much for our community we mm -hmm. appreciate it love that you guys have me on and I love our partnership thanks yes. so much we do too we'll see you again soon we'll see you in just a moment because Coast Life will be right back this segment of Coast Life was brought to you by Shell Brothers. On Coast Life, we are big animal lovers. Whether we are telling you about a four-legged friend that is ready to make your home their forever home, or it's uh, you know talking about fundraising events yeah. to help the shelters that we know and love that you know give you those pets that become family members. Always. Hi, buddy. <laughs> Just like Buddy here on the Coast Life couch, we've got Susan Kehoe with Browse About Book mm -hmm. Books joining us, and Tanner with the Brandywine Valley SPCA joining us as well. Welcome, guys. Yeah. And uh, you're here to talk about an event that's really, really fun. Happens every year in Rehoboth Beach, Bark on the Boards. And Susan, I actually ran into the two of you uh, a few weeks ago, and you mentioned that's where Buddy's from, right? That is where Buddy's from. Um, they do, Brandywine SPCA does the very smart thing where they put little adopt me vests on dogs and they parade them around at, at Bark on the Boards. <laughs> and um, this little fella came right over to me and flung himself on my feet Aww. and with his cute little vest on. And I looked at my husband and I just said, go get him. Yes. <laughs> and um, that was the end of that. And then a, then a short time later, he came prancing over to me without his adopt me vest mm. because he found his forever home and he's very happy about it. I'm very happy about it. His two dog brothers are 
still not quite <laughs> sure about him, <laughs> but okay. um, but he is here to stay, and he is the Browse About mascot now. He's our yes. little Browse a Buddy, and Ooh. he makes guest appearances at the store. Ooh. And um, Browse a Buddy, he <laughs> is just. I mean, you can tell he's he's only three years old, but he's so calm. He's so sweet. Yes. He's just such a good boy. So uh, perfect bookstore um, dog. He uh -huh. is a perfect bookstore dog. That's so he's incredible. just a perfect dog. I think all dogs are perfect, but he's. He's extra special. He's, that's mm. right, especially. So let's <laughs> learn, learn, learn about uh, Bark on the Boards then for people who, they want to have this experience yeah. too. They want their own little buddy. What does this event look like? Why do you have it every year? Yeah, so uh, browse, uh, in partnership with Browse About Books, we're really excited at Brandywine Valley SPCA to bring Bark on the Boards back. It is a community fundraiser. Uh, we call it a friend raiser <laughs> uh, because we really want folks to bring their family, friends, dogs, um, cats, okay. bird we had last year. Uh -huh. All are welcome, <laughs> uh, all are welcome. And it's really just a three hour party. Mm -hmm. uh, we have dock dogs where it's a, a really high visible uh, competition. Uh, we have uh, live music. We've got um, some vendor village throughout. I mean, it is just a great time for everyone involved. Uh, and again, all are welcome, even mm -hmm. the bird. Yes. I think I remember the first year I like stumbled across it. I yeah. didn't realize Bark on the Boards was going on. I yeah. was just, you know, taking a trip downtown. And I was like, what is all this? And the dock dogs are so they're fun to oh watch. They're amazing. They're <laughs> and amazing. Can't anybody's dog yeah. sign up to, to partake in the dock dog competition? Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, so uh, any dog who likes water um, can sign up day of. Mm -hmm. uh, registration is done on site. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a fee uh, that goes to support uh, the overall activity of the day. Um, but it's really amazing because a lot of people come from far, you know, far and near, but yeah. really far away to compete in this competition. That's so awesome. last year we had someone from Massachusetts drive Whoa. down, Whoa. Uh, some Virginia folks, Maryland. So mm -hmm. it really is a draw, and it's really neat to see those dogs kind of fly off the dog. <laughs> and uh, retrieve, <laughs> retrieve. I yeah. mean, that's ultimately what they're doing. That's incredible. I, I don't think that's going to be anything Buddy does this no. year, though. His <laughs> legs might be a little too short to go flying off the dock. Oh, Not Buddy. I, mean, I think it would be adorable, though. <laughs> right. <laughs> he, if you threw a tennis ball in there, I, he would probably go after Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and he can compete in the small section. And, he, I mean, you, you may get a winner. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, well, I know this is a, an amazing event that a lot of people are looking forward to. Could you guys tell us one more time the, the when and where yeah. people should be showing up? Yeah, absolutely. So next Saturday, mm -hmm. October 14th, 11 a.m. to 2, the vendors will start rolling in around uh, 10.30. Right. But live music hits the stage at 11. Doc competition will start a little bit earlier. So we welcome everyone. Please come on out and support. And, and definitely come early because parking, you know, yes. will right. be at a premium. Mm -hmm. And a lot of shops and businesses in town will be open. Come in early grab mm -hmm. breakfast, um, you know, shop at some of the amazing, amazing businesses downtown and support yeah. them while you're, about. check yep. out Browse Bell, <laughs> check out all the other great stores. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it'll, it's just really makes for a fun day. It is. There you go. You've already got your weekend plans yeah. figured out. Yeah. <laughs> I'm laughing too because this guy is, I see asleep. <laughs> I just hear oh, the, the deepest here. breaths. He is yeah. so relaxed. And yeah. it's so relaxing to be with him too. <laughs> <laughs> it is. Like, the opposite of my dog. <laughs> yeah. Same. <laughs> well, like we said, we've got your plans figured out for next weekend. But uh, we've also got your plans figured out for the next hour or so. So don't go anywhere because there's more Coast Life coming. Coast Life, if you're looking for something a little bit scary to do this October, our friends at the Lewis Historical Society have you covered. Mm -hmm. But before we get into that, they've also got an event coming up. Booze and Brews. So fun. <laughs> it's going to be tons of fun. Uh, Bethany Blues is going to be there. Mm -hmm. The Hot Sauce Band is going to be mm -hmm. there. Dogfish is going to be there. Yeah. So it's going to be a great event. And of course, Muddy going back to Lewis Historical Society yes. so that they can do cool events like this. Mm -hmm. the Lewis Legends Tour. Maya Henry is going to tell us more about what you can find there. You're watching Coast Life and it's officially spooky season. And today I am here with Marcos Salavaria and he has a tour going on that I think you're going to like. So Marcos, tell me a little bit about this Legends Walking Tour. Sure enough. So our Lewis Legends Tour is one of our most popular and long running tours. Uh, we do a little bit of history, we do a little bit of haunting, uh, and we let you decide, you know, where the truth has been stretched. Uh, we're sitting right now outside of uh, the Cannonball House Maritime Museum, uh, which is both one of our most famous historical events and one of our most famous haunting or spirited stories. So okay. first off, to tell you a little bit more about why it's called the Cannonball House, 
It's called the Cannonball House because during the War of 1812, specifically mm -hmm. April 6th and 7th, 1813, a bombardment while the Americas were at war once again with England. They bombarded us for over, for over 22 hours and 800 rounds of cannonballs, one of which is still lodged in the front facade of the building. Another, which I hold right here in my hands, that we invite Whoa. our visitors to do as well. Please pick, use both it. hands. This oh my is, God, it, is a nine, it is a nine pound cannonball, and it's an example of, uh, uh, of the bombardment that occurred in Lewis. Now, uh, the uh, Lewis Towner is part of the legend. Now, legend is a lot of times misinformation. A lot of times it's the key parts of the story that last. Cannonballs aren't the only thing that holds the weight of these historic tales for a town that all locals know is the root of these legends. The uh, Lewis Towner is part of the legend. Now, legend is a lot of times misinformation. A lot of times it's the key parts of the story that last. Yeah. And uh, the uh, British would have bombarded again for a almost entire day uh, off of our, about a mile off of our coast. The war resulted in an unfortunate loss against the British. The outcome may be shocking for some. There were no human casualties. The only wow. ca the only casualties of bombardment were a wounded pig and a killed chicken. So it was quite literal. So it was quite literal. But the people of Lewis were celebrating a small little yeah. town of Lewis. Had uh, we had not defeated the British, but we did outlast them, and we made wow. our mark on the national stage uh, after April sixth and seventh, eighteen thirteen. But then you ask, wait a minute. This is a, the Legends Tour tells of uh, haunting stories of things yeah. from beyond the grave. Where is the death? Where is the, where is the drama? Well, for that, <laughs> follow me. Hey, we love some drama on Coast Life. <laughs> the first part of the Legends Walking Tour begins at the home of Susan Rowland King, who encounters a tragic accident after blackening her pots. When, uh, as the story tells us, a spark from the fire escaped, caught her dress, and she was caught in a conflagration where she was gulfed in flames. So she was just poofed and gone afterwards. She was burned at a high degree. The chemicals that were on her hands <gasps> accelerated the fire. So nobody was there with her? No one was there. She lived alone. She lived alone. Oh my gosh. And this is where the, the, the part of the story begins that we tell. Where history ends is that we know from the Philadelphia Examiner newspaper of the time yeah. that um, uh, you know a well-regarded and respected woman of Lewis, Susan Rowland King, uh, found dead in her bed, uh, burned to death. Just the one room, it was her living room, her kitchen room, her dining room, her bedroom. And uh, again, the tale of when she caught fire and sadly passed, engulfed in flames, would have happened right here. Right here in her fireplace area. And nobody knows how she made it from right there to her bed. Probably crawled, unfortunately, oh, no. but we don't, uh, okay. we don't like to linger on the pain. Indeed, probably yes. Or did she truly make it to her bed? This is why these are, again, why these are legends and tales. What parts of this stories linger? What parts are forgotten? Right. What's changed? What stays the same? We fast forward to the Burton Ingram house, the most memorable house known for unknown footsteps and an unforgettable sound. So guys, we are at the end of the tour, but Marcos told me that this is probably the scariest. And we're thinking, okay, it's a music box. But Marcos, what does this music box do? It has no batteries, no wires. How does it play on its own? That's a very good question, especially as this older piece, if you look at these discs, they have the notes, the holes punched into them. It's a precursor to records, but multiple, multiple occasions, uh, our guides have reported that as they leave the tour, the music box may play just a couple of notes, maybe as a final farewell or as a final warning, maybe, we hope, an invitation to come explore more from beyond the legends. The whole time you were talking, I was getting, I was getting warm. I was like, is it about to happen? All right, guys, well, I I'm trying to jet. <laughs> I I'm, I'm scared after those footsteps, but for the people that are watching are really interested, you said they need to sign up quick. Yes, so our tours uh, are every Sunday, uh, Wednesday and Thursday at 6 p.m. from October 8th to October 29th. Uh, and they sell out fast, so please visit us at www.historiclewis.org backslash tours 
for our Lewis Legends tours. All right. Well, thank you, Marco, so much for this tour, for all the great thrills and even the, <laughs> the scares. So guys, I'm getting out of here. Me and Jackson, the camera guy, is heading out because I'm getting really warm. I don't know if somebody's about to come. So Marcos, thank you. There's more Coast Life on the way. Check this out. This is not just a take home dinner. This isn't a grocery store run. <laughs> it's an advent calendar. How cool is this? Is it by Stouffer's? Is it silly? <laughs> like, I feel like that's silly. I mean, I was not an advent calendar kid. Mm -hmm. We weren't really an advent calendar family. So yeah. I guess I, I never really got into them per uh -huh. se, but I feel like, I mean, hey, on the one hand, it's probably a good deal. Well, I was going to say, this <laughs> might get you into it. You might become an advent calendar girly because it has family size lasagna, family size mac and cheese. There's like different bowls and the whole thing, the whole advent calendar from Stouffer's is $40. Okay. $39.99. I do love a good Stouffer's mac and cheese, man. It's kind of, I think it's a good deal. I think so. We're not great at math, but. No, but I would buy, I would buy this. The Stouffer's advent calendar. I think I, I would buy it too. I'd probably buy it, open them all up on the same day and just stick everything in the freezer. Yeah, I guess everything would have to go in the freezer. Yeah. So does the advent calendar itself just go right in? Like Stay in your fridge? <laughs> right. I don't know. That's interesting. Well, we, we were got this talking about too, um, like Christmas gifts and advent calendars and things. Are they going too far? I mean, again, I really wasn't into it as a yeah. kid, so I don't know, but I feel like sometimes the kids I babysat, like they were so obsessed with the mm -hmm. advent calendar. They were like, no, we need the chocolate out of yeah. it. And I was like, bro, I don't want to touch the advent calendar. Like this is a you and your parents thing. Mm -hmm. Like I like kids go crazy about it. I still go crazy. Advent, <laughs> advent calendar, big, big advent calendar girly here. So I don't think they're getting too, too big. Yeah, I think it's fun. I think, it's, I, I think it could be really fun too. Yeah. Like it just wasn't something that we did as a family, mm -hmm. but I could certainly see myself getting into it. Cool. Like if we had started that tradition. Yeah. Well, Coast Life, stamp of approval, <laughs> Stouffer's advent calendar, I would buy it. Let us know if you do. Yeah. <laughs> We'd love to hear from you. Yeah. But it is about that time for us to finally get off the couch. <laughs> we 